Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Harvey Slater, Holistic Nutrition Coach. How's it going? So I am here today with Maria McCoy, who is a licensed marriage and family therapist. How's it going, Maria? It's going great, Harvey. Good to see you. Thank you. Good. Sorry, to we're not having coffee at Pete's or... Yeah. How are, you, how are you holding up with all this COVID craziness? Just doing my best, trying to, you know, use all my coping skills and trying to stay even keeled. Trying to stay out of the refrigerator. <laughs> Trying to take your own counseling. That's what I always say. I got to take my own coaching sometimes, right? It, that's very humbling, isn't it, to do yeah. that? So, yeah. yeah. yeah it is, <laughs> actually. It is. So, cool. So, you, I invited you on today to talk to me and um, everybody because you posted something on Instagram that was so interesting. Um, and I thought it would just be great insights for everybody as they deal with the stress and the possible stress eating and stuff like that that's going mm -hmm. on with this COVID-19 lockdown, quote unquote. And we'll mm -hmm. get to that later. I wanted to start by just sort of asking you to share your scope of practice. What is it you do and you specialize in and what's your like superpower that you help your clients with? Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you. Um, so I, I would answer that to say, you know, the primary clients that I see are individuals, couples, families, and um, I, I work from a holistic framework. So um, when, when clients come in, I, I'm trying to find what's really driving what they're just in distress over. Is it, is it a relationship? Is it you know, unhealthy lifestyle habits that they don't know how to get out of? You know, what, what could be driving it? And then, so yeah, so that's what I do. And um, just a lot of times people are struggling with depression they've had it for many years and they come into therapy maybe for some other reason but then they find out that maybe there's something in their childhood that has not been you know dealt with or looked at you know it just it wasn't their time to do it yet so that's what i help them with and that and that is um one of the main things that i do but then there there are cases where i need people like you harvey that's why i reached out to you <laughs> because you know, we all need some expert help with very important aspects of our life, including nutrition, including, you know, like Ted Moreno with his hypnotherapy. I mean, that's very helpful. Some people really need that. They need to have their subconscious hacked <laughs> and have some help with that. So, right. yeah, so I just, that's how I, that's how I do my practices, just really making sure that I'm helping my clients get what they're looking for, which is help and hopefully long lasting change and healing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's been, I'm glad you mentioned that about, you know, um, certain things you can and can't help people with because I call that building, helping a client build a really good wellness team, right? And mm -hmm. people, people, you can't get everything that you need from one specialist or one practitioner. And the more, of, the better support team you can have around you, the more successful you're going to be with your efforts in the long run, right? So that's why, Absolutely. I, that's why I love collaborating with people like you as well. So um, Healing Pathways is the name of your business. And that is such a great name for a therapy practice. How did you come up with that name? Yeah, so that one was, I don't know how other people find their business name, but you know, it took me a while. Um, I kept coming back to Healing Pathways, though, for a reason. And I think it's because it kind of left things open for if I wanted to grow down the line, I would have, you know, a practice name and not just my name. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then that's probably the first reason. But the second one, probably the most important one is that um, the, the framework that I use to see clients and help clients does not involve just one path. Everyone is completely different, almost like a fingerprint, like what they need, where they're at, what they're ready for, all of that stuff. So, so I'm very conscious of that. And when I think of healing, I think of there are, there are many avenues. One of the avenues could be a pathway out of a relationship that the person has outgrown, you know, and that the relationship is, is damaging to them. Uh, one might be, you know, a toxic living situation. One might be, um, you know, like I, I referred to earlier of just, you know, childhood difficulties that and traumas that were never processed um and you know again health reasons like their people are upset if they you know they're pre-diabetic i heard that from the functional medicine crew that there are a lot of people that are struggling with that so um that's not something that's in my scope of practice but of course 
through having a health coach like yourself and um, you have the tools for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so healing pathways might be a pathway to Harvey's office or it could be right. to other you know, practitioners that uh, can help these clients get what they need. So health wise, yeah. So it sounds to me like what you're saying is healing pathways really just means that you help the client figure out what individual path is gonna best support their unique set of circumstances and their goals and things like that. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it in a nutshell. <laughs> it's amazing, because that's yeah. exactly how um, we try to coach nutrition, right? And you even, you, I actually use the fingerprint analogy sometimes for people when we're talking- Oh, really? About, yeah, when we're talking about your metabolism, that's why, mm. you, that's why there's no one diet that fits all people, right? And For sure. just like your fingerprints don't match, your signatures don't match, everyone has a little slightly uniquely different nutritional need. There are some common things that everyone needs, like lots of vegetables, for example, but there's going to be nuances yes. as well. That's so interesting. Wow. So mm -hmm. um, tell us real briefly, just, you know, how did you get into this line of, line of work? Like what, what was your calling to do this kind of work? Yeah. I mean, I think every therapist that you ask will have a different answer that, you know, but I think for me, um, when I was a little kid, and I, I was told this by family members, I was, always, I was always rooting for the underdog. I always cared about the people that were struggling. And I, I just had sort of like, like a natural curiosity and, um, and almost like a, something where I wanted to help in some way. So I had that and then you know, another factor might be uh, when I was 18 years old, I was, uh, became a licensed hairstylist. So I actually went to cosmetology school my junior and senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I did that for about, about five years. Um, but, you know, being a hairstylist, that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, contact with clients, having my own clients. And um, that, was, that was another thing I thought that. But probably the, the thing that influenced me the most was when I was about 19, I went through uh, a relationship ending and I did not have the tools for that, like what to do, how to move forward, what to do with the feelings and emotions. And so I had some extended family that were going to a really great therapist, um, a psychologist. And um, so I thought that would be what I would do, you know, get some help from someone that can give me all the answers, you know, so I didn't have to have any pain. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I worked with her for several years and she revolutionized my life. I mean, she, she helped me. She opened up doors for me, um, believed in me. And even to the point of, I was ready to leave where I was living and I moved into another state. I moved to Nashville to work in the music industry for a few years. And she helped me have the confidence to do that. And I, I remember one particular day where I was leaving her office and and I remember thinking, what would I have done without her, you know? And then I thought, if I could help her the way she has been helping me or had helped me, then that would be the best thing ever. That, so I thought maybe someday I could do what she's doing, help, help others the way she helped me. And I think it started there, but then I didn't want to do it right away. I felt like I didn't know enough yet. I, was, I didn't want to be a therapist and too early, you know? Mm -hmm. So then I just, I knew down the road I would do it. So this is one profession where if you have gray hair, it's okay. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. the older you get, it's okay. You know, it's yeah. not the worst thing ever. Yeah. So. Well, thank God. I mean, I love getting older. I don't know about anybody else, but I love getting <laughs> older and wiser, <laughs> you know? It's a privilege. That's yeah. what, that's what, yeah, that's what like, a close family member told me recently. Getting older is a privilege. Yeah. It's like you earn some stripes in life for sure. <laughs> <laughs> some of us more than others no. yeah, yeah yeah so um most of our listeners and viewers are interested in um you know learning how to improve their um, nutrition and wellness and lifestyle habits what kind mm -hmm. of uh what kind of things do you specifically help your clients with that would be helpful that you could share with people um mm -hmm. things you help people with in your practice pertaining to nutrition, diet, self-care, and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Like give me a couple, like maybe your, your top one thing that you really help people with the most, something like that. Well, the nutrition part is your part. Mm -hmm. 
you know, for, but obviously we have conversations. That's how we find out that it's a problem, right? right. And, there's, out. and there are, there's underlying behavior that it has a lot to do with your nutrition choices. And it's that's driven where, by. Yeah. And that's <laughs> the stuff that I, that I do for clients out to therapists because I can't get any further with them because there's something. Exactly. So, so some of those underlying emotional issues that are driving behaviors that people are not happy with, those are certainly things that we, that we work on. It depends on what they're ready to do, right? Um, I would say, so that's one, the nutrition piece. And um, what are the other ones you were mentioning? Well, just self-care, wellness. I think this, health. I would say for me, the self-care is going to be the, probably the biggest one that I do. And for self-care, that can look like um, someone who is, you know, really needing to learn how to do assertive communication at work, in their relationships. I know that sounds kind of like assertive communication. Where does that fit in? But assertive communication, when you don't know how to do it, means that you're stuck. and You're stuck where you're, you're stuck in your conversations. You're stuck with your work. You're, you don't. And, and as a result, you pay in other ways. You literally, you know, develop depressive symptoms and stuff like that. And so I I noticed that, and when I have opened that door for clients to explore um, building that tool a little bit more, the assertive communication, they're, they're game. They're down for that. They know that that's what they need. And then we just slowly, you know, role play, talk about situations like that. Um, with regard to the uh, coping skills for this new COVID-19 that we're in, I mean, my goodness. <laughs> Right. So, I mean, it's a lot. Um, yeah. And I was actually going to ask you about that because this is where I want to get to the Instagram post that you posted that inspired this yeah. meetup. And that was that you talked, you were talking about the compulsion to overeat or eat mindless, you know, I call it zombie eating. That's not a clinical term, but we call it that in my practice. Um, I like it. And how, <laughs> how art and creativity are other outlets that are within and also, I think right now, a lot of people are, what's really resonating with people out there in my social media and my clients and my, um, and this uh, Healthy Happy at Home group that I started is that people mm -hmm. are really resonating with things that they have control over within the walls of their home, right? Things that they can do that, mm -hmm. help, them, that help give them a solution that they can mm -hmm. apply. Yeah, so especially if they're they have young kids or any yeah. kid, teenagers, you know, young people, right. so, um, you know, well, everyone has yeah. their phone and that's good. Yeah. So I'm but thinking, I think wow, you're, I'm turn like an eating compulsion into a creative art project or something. Um, tell, enlighten us on that. Tell us a little bit about sure, that. Or, sure. I'd love or to something, talk. Or something else that maybe you're more specialized in that you can use as an example. Yeah. Well, while I'm not a certified art therapist, I can tell you that I've used art myself like in a mentoring relationship because with art, you, you can actually, things will come out that you can't even put into words, and, but it comes out in your pictures. I mean, that's the way we commu communicate with children and, and therapy, you know, if a child's in therapy, that's how they communicate, play and drawing and stuff like that. And I think um, the Instagram post that you're talking about was my way of um, taking one thing that I know, because that's what I like clients to do is, what do you know? Everyone knows stuff, right? Mm -hmm. They've used stuff, they've done stuff, they've got hobbies, they, yeah, yeah. you know, and maybe they need to dust off their, you know, guitar or something or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I, I'd like to talk a little bit about that if it's okay. Yeah. Um, what, what, what does it do? Like when we go to the refrigerator, of course, food can be very comforting. It could be amazing. And we all love food. But um, so I created um, what you're referring to the post. I created a, a little instructions for how to do a scribble drawing, which is basically you take a pen or a marker and you just make a continuous line all over the page and uh, swerving here and curving around. And then you stop somewhere and yeah, you color it with, you know, maybe some, you know, whatever you have, oil pastels, crayons, markers, whatever you color it. And then you just hold it up and you look at it and you can see, you can see images, you can use your imagination. So what this invites people to do is to use another, another part of our mind mm -hmm. instead of the busy mind, the one that's thinking, oh my gosh, what are we doing? And, you know, oh, I have to soothe in some other way. Um, 
it's almost like what Ted was saying in, in his interview about, you know, um, hypnotherapy. We, we go into like a trance like state when we're like doing something we enjoy or like even watch a movie or, um, but for, for making art, for example, um, what it does is it brings us into the present moment, which is something that we lose <laughs> when we're stressed or anxious, yeah. mm -hmm. nervous eating, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, it also connects us to our senses, you know, like color, you know, we see visual things. If you're, if you're working with clay, for example, there's a tactile piece of that. Mm -hmm. And any type of um, art that you might work on or whatever it is, music, it creates a relaxation response, mm -hmm. which is another thing that we can get without having more snacks, right? Or um, I noticed a lot of people on Facebook talking about drinking right now and yes. talking about alcohol you, sales are up <laughs> well yeah and i also thought it was just bizarre that they made it legal to take alcohol to take cocktails to go from restaurants they did a temporary they temporarily changed the law they did like an injunction on the law to make it so that wow and i'm going well that's really brilliant for every life that we save from covid 19 we're going to lose a life from people drinking in public <laughs> no Oh my goodness. I don't need to laugh, I, but <laughs> you know. I didn't know that, Harvey. That's not good. Yeah. That's, I think they just had to do it because of the yeah. because of the, you know, just the um the shock I think that this did on the um, hospitality industry for one thing. Sure. Oh yeah. yeah. So people do I do notice a lot of joking around about medicating or jokes about, you know, you're gonna need to wear a mask at home. This joke that's going around now, there's this meme that says they're now recommending you wear a mask at home to keep you from eating. <laughs> to keep you from overeating. That's a classic nu nutrition coach joke for sure. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah. So what I'm hearing about, what I'm hearing from you about this exercise is that it doesn't really have to be any particular technique. It's just a free form kind of exercise to sort of get yeah. yourself present, get into control of your emotions mm -hmm. and your feelings a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it also sometimes can literally regulate your heartbeat and your just your breathing and everything when you're just in that calm space. Mm -hmm. And I think that's beautiful. Also, it connects us with other people. Sometimes when you, if you play an instrument, you might play with a friend or if you're drawing, everybody can draw. If you're playing a game, anybody can play, right? Everyone you can play. You can so, even do a Zoom group and get on Zoom with a bunch of friends and do drawings together, right? You could do something You like could. That. Yeah. I love that people are exercising this way, Harvey. What do you think about that? A lot of people are Well, doing I think that. it's cool. And after this is over, not, my clients aren't going to have any excuses <laughs> because it's going to be like, hey, man, we exercise our way through COVID-19. So get out there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Right? Wow. Yeah. The Rose yeah. Bowl is, uh, is um, blocked off now, which that's kind of bummer. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's, yeah. you know, Hopefully it won't be too much longer. We are doing a really good job of flattening the curve in California. I've been watching the data. So that's amazing. Very good. Kudos You're so good at doing that. I have to, otherwise I lose my mind. If I just listen to the news and stuff, I'll go crazy. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. You're be, finding the good news. I'm finding the, inf the real information, which is what I coach people to do. So I should do it myself, you know, <laughs> for sure. So, wow, this is all really helpful. And one more thing I wanted to just, I've been taking notes, as you can see, because you have such good information. Um, I love that you mentioned focusing on what you know, because yeah. we also do that in nutrition coaching. You know, when we're embarking on a new nutrition program, for example, rather mm -hmm. than turning your life upside down and trying to fit your life into the program, start with the things you're already good at. If you're really good at yeah. finding super healthy combinations at the sprout salad bar and that's a and that oh, works. Totally. you've already even do that don't go and yeah. become martha stewart right you know and i love exactly that, and i just love that idea of breaking it down into simple pieces and i think that's really helpful for people who are feeling who are really buying into that lockdown mentality and feeling so powerless and trapped mm -hmm. and scared of the future to be able mm -hmm. to say hey get a pen any pen 
Like mm-hmm. I had a green pen. I don't even know where it came from, but it's it's writing in green. I'm like, okay, so what? <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, get a pen and just start drawing and don't put any rules on it. Do something that you're good at. Or even maybe thinking about like, what was your favorite thing to draw when you were a kid or something, right? Maybe starting there. Exactly. Anytime the, the, the inner child is brought in, I'm, I'm so excited about that. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Because the inner child is where all the wonder is, all the creativity and some of the, you know, we, um, I don't know, there's, there's a super kid in there and everyone, I think. Well, right. And if we all maintain more of our natural childlike drives and instincts, the world would probably be a completely different place, right? I think so too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's an awesome note to end on, I think. Um, before we finish though, I wanted to find mm-hmm. out, um, you know, just make sure and tell everyone where can people find you um, if anyone wants to get in touch with mm-hmm. you and learn more about how you can help them. Sure. So probably the best way would be, well, I am on Facebook, Healing Pathways Counseling, and Instagram, and that would be the at Healing Pathways Counseling CA, um, and then my website. And so I, I, I think I prefer email. Email is great. Or calling. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank Very you, good. Harvey. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for coming on. And this has been really perfect and informative, and I'm sure everyone's going to get a lot of value out of it. So I, I, I look so. forward. I'm <laughs> I'm holding you to that coffee at Pete's as soon as we get a chance. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm missing that already. It just seems so unnatural to just I know, I not know. be able to do that. I know, I <laughs> but know. we can we'll do it here, it. right? Do a little bit of it here. We'll get through it every <laughs> drawing at a time, every drawing of each day. Right? Yes, we'll right. scribble our way out of it. <laughs> That's right, right on. Okay, Maria, thanks a lot for coming on and talking to us. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Harvey. All Thank right. you. Bye.